Welcome, Divine Hearts. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. And this week we have a very bright and beautiful lady joining us once more. She is Judith Kozel, and Judith is a visionary. She is an inspirational writer, and she is also able to retrieve ancient and cosmic knowledge and shares this throughout all of her work, throughout her soul readings with individuals, throughout her courses, and all that she shares on Facebook and other social media posts as well. So we are very, very grateful and thankful for you joining us today, Judith. You are a much loved and appreciated beacon of light to many of us at this time. So thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me back, Lois. And you are just as much as a shining light as I am. We're all in our own unique way. So thank you very much for what you're bringing into form and being at this most amazing time. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much. That's so kind of you. Um, I was feeling into what would be, what would feel aligned for us to be talking about today. And there's so many things with you. It's vast because of your cosmic connections. Um, but I felt it would be lovely to delve into a little bit more about Atlantis and Lemuria and uh, more so about the gifts of those experiences and why, in a sense, uh, they feel like um, it's a pivotal part of a puzzle that we are able to use and utilise at this time in our ascension process once more. Um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about that, about your inner standings about Atlantis and Lemuria as experiences for us, um, because there was so much richness there in both these experiences, um, and they vary in frequencies, especially Atlantis, lots of varying uh, frequencies there from the really dense frequencies to the golden Atlantis period, where uh, beings ha were able to to live and be within a fifth dimensional frequency. Um, and for me, the Lemurian frequency is all about the divine mother frequency, this purity, um, this just organic love. And so it feels like uh, that we are called to go through a merging process, bringing both those experiences together in a sense as part of this union that we go through and that there's so much that we have learned on soul level from both these experiences and how um, important they are in this now for us as we move forward. Thank you. I just want to sort of go back, you know, in time because we, you can't understand Lemuria or Atlantis until you understand where yes. we originally come from. So in the beginning, uh, in the very beginning, you've got to remember that you have a universal um, core, then you have the galactic core. And we've always been part of the galactic core. So that just means we've been part of the intergalactic federation. All right. So the original Earth, which is the inner Earth, Agatha, okay, um, that was a satellite station for the intergalactic fleet, in our, uh, but our solar system and the Milky Way galaxy at that stage was still attached to the seven central sun of illumination. There are 12 central sun that make up one single sun, but we were attached to the seventh, which is the one of illumination, the state of illumination where you are one with, with the divine in all and everything and in every sense, okay? And, and that is where the divine masculine and the divine feminine are beautifully balanced and in harmony. So that, that, that was already in the seventh dimensional state, which is often referred to as the seventh heaven, okay? In that state and the highest state that the, some of these star systems and galaxies are, you literally go from the seventh to the twelfth, excuse me, dimensional state. Now, the, the intergalactic federation, most of those that belong to that federation are seventh dimensional beings. So we can't see them with our naked eyes. They, they, will, they will often project a holographic image of themselves and their craft so that we can see them with our naked eyes because we have sunk too low to see them, 
Okay, but you can see them with your third eye and, and you can also sense that they are there, uh, but they will always make themselves known to you when you are ready to make to not, uh, you know, go into fear mode or whatever else, because most of them are very beautiful, loving beings. Um, although you also have the ones that are not that, which which is another story. But um, so if you are in that highly evolved state, you become a co-creator with the divine. So what happened is the scientists, okay, then started creating the outer crust of the earth, okay? And when that was formed, it was then a planet, okay? So now we have a planet with the inner core still in place, and that is Agatha, which is still there, and the beings who live there are in the seventh dimension. They've never changed, okay? So they are our elder brothers and sisters. But then the intergalactic systems, uh, intergalactic councils and the federation and the intergalactic fleet started then to start to bring plant and animal species and tree species. And those, the Pleiadians are very much involved there because they brought the plants and the trees and everything because they're the botanists, okay? And then the animal species came in, the dolphins and the whales and, and so on, because you must remember on the motherships of the intergalactic fleet are literally ox. They've got every species of animal or plant and whatever, and they still live in those motherships. So they could easily take them and, and take about two of each and then, you know, start breeding them on the planet. And the whole idea was that it would be an experiment to see how life would actually evolve on planet Earth as a new planet in the, in the solar system. So uh, the, the scientists that actually came here fell in love with this beautiful planet Earth, newly created. And she was so beautiful that she was literally like the jewel of creation. Everybody who passed here said how beautiful she was in a prime. And so they fell in love with the planet and they asked the Intergalactic Federation, can they please settle on this planet? So they said, yes, you can settle here on one condition. You sign a contract that you will partake in an experiment of life on Earth. That is so important to remember. It's an experiment, okay? And if you come here incarnated, you take part in an experiment, okay? Your soul knows this before you incarnate. So you had Elysium, which was a very first civilization on earth, and it was literally paradise on earth. We adhered to the law of one. We, we, we had that beautiful loving essence where we did not harm each other and we didn't harm anybody else. Because whatever you harm, you harm yourself with. That is that is how life is in the in the universe. It's a law of cause and effect. It's a core law of responsibility. If you co-create, what are you going to co-create? You know, are you going to co-create within the divine laws, or you're going to co-create outside it? If you go outside it, you always create everything that is destructive. Because, but but that's another story I'm coming to. But then uh, the wars of heaven broke out. Okay. Those were the ones that rebelled against the divine laws, okay? They, they, they felt themselves to be better than the divine. They did not want to adhere to the divine. So they are the ones that we now call the dark ones, okay, whatever that, that means for you and that connotation. They are a very destructive element, in their own way, because they, they um, and it was actually the, the first um, of the Intergalactic Federation were the 12 master galaxies, which were the first creation of the divine. And we belong to that uh, because the Milky Way galaxy was always one of the 12 master galaxies. So when these wars of heaven broke out, um, Elysium had to be evacuated because um, the, the planet between Jupiter and Mars blew itself up, literally blew itself up. And you can imagine what chaos it is because you must remember we've got a solar system, we've got a counter solar system. So everything is blown out of proportion and it makes hole in the whole universal core. So, and then there were star systems that were blown up and constellations were blown up, etc. It was total chaos. And um, the Earth was literally thrown out of orbit, like all of the solar system was. And then the only only the inner Earth survived. Okay, 
So, so that is basically what survived. And some of the animals and plant species survived by some miracle, okay. When all of this had settled, you've got to remember it was, it was about many millions of Earth years because time does not exist in, at universal level. Um, then the Lyrans, who, whose, whose own galaxy was blown up, or you know, literally it, it was uninhabitable at that time, they, they fled to Sirius. And then from Sirius, they got permission from the Intergalactic Federation to come and settle on Earth so that they had a home. You see, they had a home. And then they literally built on what has sort of like somehow or other remained from Elysium. Okay. They are the megalithic builders. You know, there's big sites, megalithic sites that you find all over the world. Those were the what I call them the lion people, mainly because they're very tall. They, but some of them were over 20 feet tall or 20 meters tall. And they had red hair, red hair, reddish hair, and a sort of like a copper, coppery skin. And um so they started that again, and they were the master architects and builders. So the beautiful hanging gardens and what we remember of that and the pyramids and so on were all built by them and the pyramid grids, which were energy grids so that you could tap into the natural energy of the earth. You did not need to strip Mother Earth. You could literally use the same energy that is cosmically available in space. That is how you actually build your spacecraft, et cetera, all to actually function from the same energy field. You use it to light up your home. So you, you don't need to, you know, take minerals and things out of the earth in order to create anything. So we were then in the seventh dimensional state. But then what happened was that the, the two brothers fought over the kingdom. And then that same old wars of heaven sort of like started. The Lion Kingdom was destructed. And then Avalon rose. Avalon was the third, which is there more or less where Spain and Portugal and France was. There was no Atlantic Ocean, so it's that part. And North America was still attached to Africa because in the beginning there was just one single continent and Africa still holds that. So... Um, those were the, the, the uh, Avalon was a very peaceful, beautiful, um, matriarchal society that uh, was actually, um, they were the what, what we remember as the wizards like Merlin, but they always had the counterpart. She was called Melinda. So they had Melinda, so that Merlin. You see how our patriarchy has pulled out the woman everywhere. So, and, and, the, and they had Druidic high priestesses that literally ran the Druidic tradition. That's where the Druids started. They were highly scientific and they knew how to manifest anything into form. They didn't have a solid form like we have. They could shape shift into any form that they like. And if you actually look at mythology, they do tell you that, that the gods and goddesses could shape shift into any form that they liked. Okay. So when Avalon was still in its prime, Lemuria rose, and Lemuria was still in the Pacific. You could say Pacific with parts of, of Australia, New Zealand, the, the, um, the eastern parts of um, uh, that, with parts of Antarctica, they were still a part of that um, Lemurian tradition and parts of the western part of America. And um, the Lemurians were actually very, very highly sophisticated, but they were androgynous. This was the experiment of androgyny on Earth, okay, where you had the male and female within one body. So you were perfectly balanced, okay? You did not need a partner, you know, you had, you had your partner within you. So you could create a child actually by seeding it into a sort of like, a, 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 um, one would say almost like an a incubator, for better word of it, and uh, in a tube. And then this, 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 this child would have all the love that it needs because they were loving, very loving, gentle race, very much with the divine mother, as you say. And that, that tube was crystalline, okay? So, so they were beautiful crystal beings. And then um, once the child had been fully grown, it would literally step out of that and be fully born. So there was no trauma or no pain involved in birth, 
Okay, that's something very important for us to remember. And they built beautiful crystalline cities. They, they, were, they were a race that worked with Mother Earth. So they actually never destroyed any forests or anything. They would literally build their, their abode sort of in and around, you know, the Mother Earth, using the beauty of Mother Earth, incorporating the animals and the plants and the trees because they knew about oneness and they knew that everything was one. So they didn't harm animals. They didn't need to eat them. They didn't need to, to sort of survive on them because they knew about prana, you know, living with prana. Our, our whole um, remembrance about prana comes from the Lemurians, which is the life breath itself. And eventually you can live all that life breath and actually attain immortality. So they had very long lifespans, which we've lost. A crime. They, they grew more than a thousand years old because they knew how to rejuvenate themselves and knew how to use this at cellular level. And they, they very much, um, the, 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 the crystals that were then sort of incorporated had the Divine Mother energy within it with Avalon, all right? You already had it with Avalon and Elysian and the Lion Kingdom. Now, those crystals um, sort of were disappearing. Oh, I, okay, we will get to Atlantis now. <laughs> In the meantime, Avalon was invaded by a race from Mars. Okay, they came from Mars and they literally attacked the, 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 the those from Avalon who never needed to defend themselves. Okay, you suddenly have the brutality of people hacking you to pieces, which you never, ever experienced before. So um, and they literally went for for the woman priestesses in a in a great way because the woman a priestesses the druidic could actually bring lightning and thunder down any time they actually liked you know because that they they worked with it it was the way they worked with energies okay so um, uh, and that uh, when I was in France I, I saw that that um, the the main temple of of Avalon was actually just off the coast of Karnak in France, where the standing stones are. And uh, some of us, it's just a tiny peak of that island still exists. And funnily, according to mythology, that is the island of the high priestesses. So, so in, 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 in that mythology of Brittany, it's still alive. So it's not that they, they, and they all knew that those priestesses had something to do with the standing stones. Okay. So um, the, they actually then, of course, now uh, with all of that, suddenly parts of, of, of um, the main land started to break off, okay? And that became the islands of Atlantis. Suddenly the Atlantic Ocean appeared because of the destruction of Avalon. So now Avalon was destructed. Lemuria was in its prime. Now Atlantis rises, okay? Atlantis in its, but now Atlantis could not reach that seventh dimensional state anymore that Lemuria and Avalon and all those were in. That is that frequency band, which is part of a wholeness. Okay. And then they already now were in the fifth dimension, which was lower. Okay. So um, you had the golden age of Atlantis because now we were still male and female, okay? So when they differed from the Lemurians because the Lemurians had the androgynous body, were taller than the Atlantis, Atlanteans, and then the Atlanteans had the male and female body. It was basically because there they were told this, and you can now again get into the, the, you know, the, the male and the female form, okay? because the Lemurians had mastered themselves beautifully in that androgynous form. Mm -hmm. But um, you now need to bring the balance back so that brother won't fight against brother anymore, okay? Remember the Lion Kingdom, that you will actually get into a state where you won't need to fight anymore. And when you reach the state that you don't fight anymore, you can actually then ascend into the seventh again. So that was the whole idea of Atlantis, so that humanity would master the lessons of the Lion Kingdom and Elysium before it with the walls of heaven and reach that state of oneness again and then ascend back into the seventh so that they would merge with Lemuria again, you see? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So, so you had the golden age of Atlantis where, where everything was beautiful, okay? You had peace. People worked in harmony. They did not harm Mother Earth. They built their crystal pyramid temples again, and they built their, their, their whole uh, – they had very high technology, um, which is now awakening again. And also they, they, they worked as one. You know, we, you had, again, the equality between the male and the female uh, with, with the high priestesshood and the high priesthood working as one. Okay. So um, you had the islands of Atlantis, many of those islands, because remember they were like the peaks that was left of Lemuria. So a lot of them still, uh, um, of Avalon. Yes. So a lot of them still had the ancient teachings of Avalon and the Lion Kingdom and Lemuria. So they were still sort of, but on the fifth dimensional state, they couldn't quite understand it anymore, you see, yes. because now they lower, all right, so they couldn't access that seventh dimensional. The Lemurians could, but the Atlanteans could not. Okay. So what happened was then is that the same old people, you know, that started the war of heaven, that started the destruction of Atlavalon, they started to infiltrate the minds of humanity again. I always see them as almost like a virus. When they get into your brain or whatever, they start to control your brain. And once they control your brain, they start divorcing your mind from your heart. Okay. And that's exactly what happened in Atlantis. They actually, you know, the Bible, the, you know, that the, the whole cre which says about Adam and Eve and the tree of life is actually tells you about Atlantis because the serpent actually always belonged to the divine mother, and the serpent was always the sign of highly evolved knowing and knowledge, which the divine feminine held. So you will see the serpent is everywhere on sacred sites, as is the spiral, because that's the spiraling energy that the divine mother holds, which is the energy that holds the electromagnetic currents, Okay, the, the telluric currents, which is the energy that was used in all this spacecraft and in every home, etc. Okay, so it was actually the power that held creation together. Okay. So when 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 they say that the serpent actually came and 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 uh, and asked Adam, you know, whatever, well, it was then they said Eve was it, but in truth, what happened, it was Adam, okay. And there's a beautiful story, and you know, I'll get to that later on. But what happened is Adam got himself involved with those ones that were actually mind controlling him. So there the seeds of dissent were sown in Adam's mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do I really need to adhere to the law of one? Am I not greater than my creator? You see? I am more than the father that created me. I can do better than he can. You see, that's a competition of the male that comes into form and be him. So Eve had actually nothing to do with it. It was Adam that was being seeded the thoughts of descent, okay, which he swallowed. In other words, he became the descent, He started to actually divorce himself from the divine and he divorced himself from the female. But what, what the Jewish mythology tells you that he was first married to Lilith because Lilith was his partner that was given to him by the divine. But Lilith was a very strong and able woman. Okay. She was absolutely the divine feminine because she always said, you are not more than me. Okay. We are equals. And she refused to lay, to bow down to his wishes if she saw it was not, you know, within divine will. Okay. That's very important to remember. She stood up and she said, you are going the wrong way. So what did Adam do? He complained about her in the highest degree. And he said, you gave me the wrong Wife, you see how already he was dissenting against <laughs> the divine. Okay, 
<laughs> he was questioning the divine in all and everything. Okay, that, that is how you start separating your inner knowing from this part here that is questioning everything. It's not bad to question, but you've also got to listen to your intuitive voice or insight. He was ignoring that intuitive side and he said, I want to have another wife. So he was given Eve, okay? Eve was more pliant and more submissive. But then he didn't like Eve either because eventually he accused her of, you know, sort of like bringing him into sin, which was she never did. It was he himself that had this inner turmoil in himself where he could not govern himself. That is basically where patriarchy starts. So just like old Adam didn't want all these wives, you know, that, that the divine gave him, you know, so he started to divorce, divorce himself from, from God and God laws, okay? He, he totally started to ignore the divine feminine because he couldn't handle the divine feminine, okay, in whatever form or way. And that is exactly what happened in Atlantis. That's when patriarchy started taking over. They started to perse per uh, persecute the, the, the high priestesses. They started to, uh, to, you know, to, to get the females. Uh, 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 and, and really, the, the priesthood in Atlantis actually stood together. And they said, we will not allow this because they saw what was happening. They realized what was happening. You know, people like Thoth that you read about in the, in, in the Egyptian mythology, he is there. There, there is the, the, the um, Hermes, actually, they, they were two priest, high priests. They were not just one and the same, but later they got confused as the same because the Greeks gave forth the, the name of Hermes as well. So they sort of merged them. But um, Hermes went to Hawaii later uh, uh, when Atlantis fell and he started the Kahuna tradition, you see. So, so when high priests actually had the foresight, they said the full vision, they knew what would happen to Atlantis. They saw they would destruct themselves, okay? And they would take most of the humankind with them because of mind control. Because what happened is these black magi who took over, because in my soul readings, they always come up as a black magi. So they were like magicians, but they used the dark side. They didn't use the light side. So they actually, they actually sowed the seeds of duality in Atlantis, you see. And then what happened is that, that um, as these seeds were sown, the, the high priests, that is woman high priest, high male high priest, actually had the gift of prophecy. So they, they could see, oh my goodness, this is going to go into a great calamity because humankind is not mastering that lesson. Okay, instead of going up into the seventh, they're now going to descend into darkness. They're going to descend into duality. But they knew that they had to keep that there were seeds of enlightenment, the seeds of illumination alive. So they literally dispersed all over the world. In other words, they started planting colonies all over the world on places where they knew they would be able to survive the floods because they knew the floods would come because the black magi were starting not only to, to implant control boxes here in the cranium area of, of, of the neck where they actually divorced your higher chakras from your lower chakras. So you couldn't access your heart anymore, you see. You couldn't access the lower part of you. So now you were totally in the mind and you were mind controlled because they had a massive computer where everybody was plugged in, you see. And in a sense, the populace allowed that to happen. So, but there were always those that stayed true to the law of one and saw that. So in Peru, for instance, they started that, excuse me, that pockets in, in all the, all the, excuse what we now see as, 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 as the continents. Some of them were not there then. Some of them like, kind of went under, you know, they, they, they were swallowed up by the floods. Some literally were lifted up. Some were still under the sea with that Atlantis. But they foresaw those parts that they would actually survive. One of those is Egypt. Ancient Egypt is very important in this whole spiel because Thoth and his wife Sheshat went back there. And they actually, with the ox that they had at that time, the ox were like spaceships that could actually burn 
burrow like a like like a mole underground, and they actually created these underground tunnels and cities, okay, which are still there. And it's not just in Egypt, but all over the world, all right. So they knew that when the floods came, they had to go underground in some places. Yet they had in the Himalayas, which they knew they would rise. They actually also, like Tibet is one of the places where the Lemurian civilization plus the Atlantean civilization plus those were held all these millions of years. You know, as we're in the Ural Mountains in, in Russia, as we're in, in places on Earth like, like the Incas, the Incas were actually not the ones, it was the ones that are the ancient ones that are in South America underground that actually held those pockets of information. And I have come across them here in Africa as well. They call themselves the ancient ones because they say we are your elder brothers and sisters. We are holding that illuminated states for you in custody, but they will only reveal themselves to those that I know are truly seeking and are not going to misuse any information, you know, to whatever for other reasons. So th these pockets of, of these high priests then actually, when the floods came, and, and it, it actually Atlantis was on the verge of blowing up this planet, okay, totally where the Intergalactic Federation intervened and said, no ways will you blow up a planet again. We have made a vow that this would never, ever happen again. Not on ever again that the planet blows itself up or any other constellation or whatever. You must remember, they so highly evolved. They can stop anything that humanity does in an eye wink. They've got the power. But the thing is, we've also got free will and choice, and we have to also take responsibility for our own choices. You know, what is it that we wish to create? And that's our whole lesson here. And at this time, this is coming to the fore again. But the worst part of Atlantis, what they destroyed Lemuria as well, and they again were the ones that, that sowed the seeds of descent into the Lemurians. Because the Lemurians were very, very happy. They, were, they had everything that they could desire. They could manifest anything into form and being that they liked. But one thing they didn't have were the two separate bodies, okay, the male and female form. So the Atlanteans came up with this, these black magi came up with the idea that if they actually could convince the Lemurians that they lost out on the sexual energy to mate and therefore, on earth, they actually said that the divine didn't make them perfect, which was a total lie. I mean, they were even more perfect than the Atlanteans were in the androgynous form. So the, the, one of the Atlanteans actually then devised a machine where he could literally cut the, the androgynous body into two parts. So they would split into a male and female form. So some of the Lemurians actually fell for this and eventually more and more could did it because they thought, well, I want to see what this is like. I want to experience this. But now if they actually separated, they could never get back again. And they realized the, the, the Atlanteans had hoodwinked them because you can have sex with somebody, but it doesn't mean you're going to get back on the soul level of that united, that ultimate unity, that sacredness that you had before in one body. You cannot unless you are in at that illumined state where you totally merge at soul level again, it's got nothing to do with the physical. Okay. That was the tragedy of Lemuria, that they fell for the Atlanteans. And once that actually separated them, they could never get back together again. So they would actually now try desperately to get this with other partners and in that pain and suffering was created, which they never ever knew before, you see. So um, with that, the Atlanteans started to enslave them because the Atlanteans wanted their technology. But you see, the door was closed there because the original plan was for humanity to rise into the seventh, the Atlanteans back into the seventh, where they could easily access that again. But the, these were trying to get that by force and to want to use it in self-destructive ways. In other words, to destroy instead of to bring that oneness and unity again. 
So we are literally now standing in exactly the same thing, the same scenario. It's just a little bit different, but what are they doing? They're doing exactly what they did in Atlantis. So by this time, the alarm bell should be going off, you know, big time here with all of humanity and say, you know, are we going to allow this again? You know, are we going to allow ourselves to be manipulated and controlled to this degree that we actually do exactly what happened in Atlantis? Or are we going to finally you know, ascend now back into the fifth dimensional state so that we can ascend even higher into the seventh dimensional state because both are available for souls now. Yes. Oh, that's that was just majestic how we were able to bring <laughs> everything in in that way. That was incredible. Um, and so much there because uh, it feels that, many many are awakening and that this is this is in a sense uh, an incredible catalyst for people to see as well now um and for me it's been uh, about coming to a place of um acceptance and merging aspects that I didn't want to look at, didn't want to acknowledge, the Atlantean being one of those aspects. Um, and that it's, and just to, to come to a place of uh, understanding within myself that, um, that there's such a richness in all those levels of frequencies that we chose to experience. Um, and that, um, that that is the, the nugget of gold, in a sense, that I need now in my uh, process to be able to move forward and leap forward. And not from a place of, because you go through phases of anger and resentment uh, when you remember, um, but it's coming to fuller compassion. Oh, so I chose to experience these experiences for soul growth and uh, to be able to move forward uh, from, from those experiences. So it's um, really interesting uh, times that we are living in at, at these times. Um, and also finding the compassion to allow each their own experience um, and to uh, not even feel like I'm coming into judgment anymore there were times when I was um, but now to come to a peace and to a, a place of understanding is much bigger than I even imagined and that everybody has their own journey and their own uh, soul way that they've designed and aligned things and to be fully respectful of that too so um one aha moment I had a few weeks ago was thinking about history uh, and the, the story that we have been led to believe about who we truly are, where we have come from and what we are capable of. And so, of course, that the history, which is many have mentioned before, his story, it is going to be the story of the, the the, the victor or the good and the bad it is going to be a reflection of the duality because that's the frequencies that we were playing in and so the history was going to be reflecting that and now as we are evolving now as we are remembering and uh, wonderful beings like you have access to these cosmic ancient uh, knowledge and wisdom this is going to be something that many, many more beings are going to be doing naturally now from within themselves, tapping into this true history, this cosmic history as you've been displaying to us now today. Um, and uh, that it's all interlinked with everything. It's all interlinked with the crystalline frequencies which is us activating our own crystalline from inside, becoming and holding that frequency more and more, and activating the light body and being able to tap into what will seem like new capabilities 
these mythical gifts and talents that you were speaking about the people of Avalon were able to do and um, so many of our brothers and sisters in our past and our lineage these capabilities are going to be coming back online again for us um, so um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about maybe the crystalline frequencies and the light body and the way that you understand it and the connections. First of all, the Divine Mother has now fully returned. You know, you know that's, that's the thing. Uh, the balance is being restored uh, in a beautiful way. And the thing is, what's happening is the heart opening, the heart yes. opening. Yes. Because the heart needs to be fully opened because it's your, it's your the heart is your 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 hub it's the central hub of everything because your soul is directly connected to your heart once you start understanding that you are soul more than you are physical body you seek that oneness because you 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 become aware that you need to transcend the duality between in yourself also the masculine and feminine within yourself because the yin and the yang because it's actually one entity um, the, when we start transcending duality, you can't see big, good or bad anymore. You can only see one because in truth, you have all everything that is in humanity is within you. You can't say I'm not that because you are that. Whatever you see in your brother or your sister is there within yourself. And it's mostly the things that most often push your buttons the most that that is there within you that you are not seeing within yourself but the beauty of it is it's showing you your own face back so that you can start to love yourself into the deepest shadow and the highest light you are both you're not always nice you can be mean too you're not always kind you can be cruel too and most often you are cruelest to the ones that are nearest to you you know, you will often say things to them you would never say to even a friend or, or to a stranger. You know, you would rather bite on your tongue but to say it. And that is why the most turbulent relationships now are within in uh, close relationships often because you've got to learn to also embrace everything that your partner or, or your children are showing back to you as within you. You understand that because we are stepping into the state of oneness where every soul that we meet brings a lesson with it. But when we react to that lesson and say, I don't want that lesson, what happens is we are denying ourselves of infinite love because the divine only sees the perfection in you, not the imperfections, because the divine created you perfect, you know, perfect perfection. And to me, that's the most beautiful thing is how these things are coming up now for us to realize that, to start with doing the inner work and to say, wow, you know, I am that. I am. I am everything that I see in my brother. I am everything that I see in my sister. I don't need to teach them lessons. You know, their lessons are their own lessons. I've got to master my own lesson so that I can step into the, the more I step out of duality, the more and higher my crystalline body becomes because we're now adopting the higher frequency body. We're adopting the new Adam Cutman body of a new human race. So in other words, the higher our, our, our light body becomes, the less we can, adopt, we can live uh, uh, duality. We can't live it anymore. It becomes impossible because that is why um, the greatest key to the new age is love. But it's not love that is conditional love. It's a love that's unconditional. In other words, I just see the perfection in you. I don't see the imperfections anymore because I realize you're perfect just like you are. Yes, you have a shadow, you have a light, but you are whole in that. And we cannot love another being until we start loving ourselves in that deepest parts of ourselves and not to deny parts of ourselves that we don't like 
and beat ourselves up about it, but to understand that that is also serving you in the greatest degree. That when I do soul readings, many souls have been anything but angels in other lifetimes. Okay. And that goes for all of us, myself included. All right. Um, but we also see that as a learning curve of a soul. Because if you had not had that experience, how will you know what light is? How will you know what love is? How will you know what oneness is? Okay. You had to sink in the deepest of duality to understand that duality causes pain and suffering. Now you realize I don't want that anymore. I want now to create the wholeness and the harmony and the unity. And I can only do this if I am one with the divine within me and I'm one with myself. You cannot sow the seeds of oneness if you are in duality. It is impossible. It's, but that's the beauty of it. And, you know, um, Mother Nature is showing us that. You know, whatever, if, if you look, you are a crystalline being, but you also have a crystal that is within you. You have sacred geometries that is there in your soul name. And that is why all souls, you know, the beginning and were created with sacred geometry here right on your forehead. And that is why you will always recognize other souls through this part here and that part there, because it's the, the eyes are the windows to their soul, but it's also where the sacred geometry is like there on their forehead. You, the, that it shows who they are in truth, okay? You cannot lie, okay, about that truth, because every soul has got a unique creation within them which is so unique that they can never be replaced. You know, I, I was I was once when I was still working at the museum, there was a lady there that actually um, did the restaurant, but she loved doing jigsaw puzzles and the giant ones. Um, and one day she, and then she would frame them. And one day she called me and she said, Judith, look at this. I finished this jigsaw puzzle, but there's one piece missing. She says, this Jigsaw puzzle can never, ever be complete because I have that one piece is missing. And, you know, that made such an impact on me that I understood that is what we are. You know, in the whole of the omnibus, we slot in each one exactly where we need to be. If we are missing, the whole universe cannot be whole. Okay. That is the intricacy of you know, of. of creation, that the divine has written his, your name on that piece. And that piece is so unique that no other piece can actually replace it. Isn't that amazing? Isn't when that you start amazing. understanding that, that how beautifully you were created and with so much love. You know, one of the Bible verses that's always spoken to me is in Isaiah, where it says, I have called you by your name. In other words, I've called you by that piece that I made. I put your name on it. You are mine. You belong to me. To me, that's always spoken deeply in my soul, that I think to myself that the divine knows me so much and loves me so much that I am that unique part of that whole creation that he calls or he, she calls by her name. She says, there it is, your mind. And the I am that I am says that I am part of you. You are part of me. We are not separated because the divine lives within you. And once you realize that the tree of life is within you, you are a living tree of life within the greater tree of life. If you look at a tree, if you want, ever want to go meditate, go, go meditate under a tree and sit with your, with your back to a trunk of a tree and then just go and, and start meditating about the tree and, and the whole ecosystem that is within that tree. You know, the trunk is unique. Every single branch is unique. Every single leaf of that tree is different. There's not one leaf that is exactly the same. There's not one flower that's the same. And then you think of all the insects and the birds and, and all these, these little uh, uh, whatever they are, your micro, micro, microcosmos that is in a tree. You start to understand that you are that tree within the universal tree within the divine tree, okay? And all works together as one, one unit, okay? 
And that is what we're returning to. The Intergalactic Federation are waiting for us to finally reclaim our cosmic citizenship so that we can resume intergalactic travel, so that we can be with our brothers and sisters in space. And not if they dare come us and shoot them, because that's what they do, you know. You are shooting at yourself, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I was seeing recently as well the words homecoming, because that's what it is. We're returning. This is a homecoming for us who are choosing yeah, exactly. to come back. And I'll, I'll take you back because you mentioned the axe, these axe that were placed uh, in different places on the planet. Um, and I was listening to um, Dr. Michael Sala speaking to a gentleman recently about uh, project, the projects that were occurring where they discovered these arcs and how they were all interconnected. And each arc had something different in there. Some had seeds uh, and all plant life, um, and others had um, ancient knowledge and scribes. Um, and so, um, and others had these technologies that were able to, this of holographic technologies that were able to. Um, tell you your exact DNA lineage and um, all sorts of things that seem beyond the beyond in comprehension terms to many, but is just part of this uh, gradually softening of the veil, I suppose, and the um, disclosure that's gently merging into the consciousness now so that we begin again to truly tap into what you're saying now this returning this connection again um that we were never never truly alone and that we are part of something much bigger and that we are capable uh, on soul level and on in physical level uh, of something quite incredible and all through the heart it's just so divine you see, um, you can't, you can't uh, go, you know, this ancient technology that, that is busy reactivated. I was involved with the ox uh, reactivating them last year from July because I was just suddenly told, you know, because with the, I was, I was doing intense work, you know, energetic remote work to Egypt, you know, continuing the work I did there in 2019. And I got to myself to these things and I, I didn't quite understand what it was about because I'm often given these pictures, you know, and I don't, I don't always understand because of where it comes from, but I do it anyway, because I know that it's for a higher reason, you know, I'm just the instrument that's being used. But it's not just the ox that are there, it's of the whole sacred sites are being reawakened. Because as if as the new earth now is fully established and a 20, 22 February has been a catalyst in that, a great catalyst. I don't know if, if because I've found these last three months, I can't do anything. I, it's a totally new life that is emerging for all of us. And I, the more you try to sort of get your other life, you know, still like you did before, to me, it's all going and that, 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 it's not, you know, it's not working anymore, whatever way you look at it. You try to, 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 to sort of do it in some form, but it, it just doesn't, doesn't work anymore. And that is exactly what is happening now. But if you try with your 3D technology and your 3D mind to try and get into this, you, you, you're not going to go anywhere because you can't go there with a dualistic mind. You can't say, okay, what can I get out of it? Okay. I see this very advanced technology. Now I want to have it. You know, I want to, I want to see what it's all about. I want to decipher it. I want to know how it works. It's not going to work. Why? Because your intent is not pure. Your heart is not pure. They're not going to access any technology because their heart isn't pure. I don't say there aren't any that haven't got pure hearts. But most of them are still in their minds, divorced from their hearts. They think, I want to use this technology. But why do you want to use it? To make war? To destroy? To distract? To kill people? Uh-uh. Uh, those times are gone. They left. From now on, humanity will have to remaster that, that you do not need to kill anybody. Because if you kill anybody, you're killing yourself. If you have that advanced 
I view and you live it from the heart and soul and with love. You cannot harm anyone because you understand you harm yourself. That technology that, that is now coming to the fore and that, that the crystalline energy that's now being revealed with the new crystals that are going to appear now all over the world because it's not just the Lemurians that are coming back with the Lion Kingdom and Elysium. It will become more and more obvious. They were also high technology, okay, and high frequency. They will not reveal themselves until the purest souls can actually access them. And this is not because I'm making a divide, but again, because of a vibrational frequency, okay? Because each of these creations had a divine imprint in them. Just like I just told, every soul is unique. Everything that they created had a unique imprint on it, okay? But you can only access that imprint if your consciousness and your intent matches that. You know, the Egyptians say it's so beautiful because they always talk about the halls of Anubi, okay? And, and, and the god Anubi, who looks like a jackal with a jackal head, he guards that with his legions. Why does he guard it? He guards it because only those can have access to the halls of records that are under the Sphinx that are of pure intent, Okay. Before anybody will help you, they look at your intent. They look at your heart. They look and they say, okay, if this information is given you, what will you do with it? Will you use it for the higher good and to bring unity and peace and harmony and raise the consciousness of humankind? Or will you use it to destruct and destroy like you did in the past? The same with crystal technology. When in Atlantis, they abused the crystals, the elementals in the crystals, and they started to use them in the atomic lasers that blew up, I say, nearly the planet. At that stage, the Divine Mother told the high priestesses of Atlantis and said, you and those of Lemuria that stayed true, said, you will... Put these crystals in the earth and you will bury them and you will seal them off so that nobody can access them until the time when humanity returns to the purity of love and unity and harmony and has the consciousness again to create paradise on earth and not destruction. So they were literally sealed off. And so many other souls that are now incarnated were the ones that sealed them off. But the challenge now rise again. Are you going to still be in duality or are you going to be in that unity consciousness field? So again, it's an individual challenge. Very much so. And it's beautiful because um, having been a crystal lover for many, many years and now working with Andara's too, the way that uh, crystals are discovered in different places just at the right time, new frequencies, um, new light technology all the time and just in divine time with where we are at at that time what we are ready for and there is this um higher sort of guardianship around all of it you can feel it nothing that's uh, going to be too advanced or evolved can be released yet until we have proven ourselves to be pure and of the highest intent and so so we we get these pieces just unveiling beautifully around the world um just just in alignment as we are ready to evolve and step a little further so it's all beautifully designed 
Um, I know that you have been going through um, your own uh, processes, uh, expansions, uh, deeper connections from inside. Um, and what you maybe have seen too through your soul readings, uh, maybe uh, sort of uh, general messages or themes that you feel are of assistance in this time now, what people are going through maybe, or uh, your own experiences maybe. What we're going through now is, is that uh, um, duality is steadily being dismantled, you know, and you will get to the stage where you literally feel nothing is working anymore. You know, As these can be your relationships. It can be your work situation. It can be whatever you try, like, uh, um, you know, keeping your schedule together and then find your schedule is going haywire. You know, um, it's all part of that process of dismantling of your 3D. Okay. Um, you know, we are very scared sometimes to let go. You know, we, we have this idea um, I am this, you know, but you you identify yourself with your name, you know, who you are now in, on, in this time. You identify you with the career that you're following. I'm a teacher. I'm an engineer. I'm a whatever. Um, but that is not who you are at soul level, you know. Like um, <laughs> I did a reading with somebody the other day and it came up that uh, she said, my goodness me, you know, I've gone in, in a completely different uh, direction this life, but I've always somehow known you that, that it wasn't the direction I should have gone into. And now I suddenly find myself and see myself, oh my goodness, you know, this has always been speaking to me and especially lately and I just ignored it, you know, type of thing. That this is going to happen more and more because your true soul self will now start speaking to you with the divine and say, listen, wake up. You came here to do a specific work. You know, that specific piece that you are now needs to get activated here so that the whole jigsaw puzzle can be completed. Okay. We need you now to slot in because before we actually incarnated, we sit with our higher guide and we, and we all knew that the old earth would, would cease to exist and that the new earth would come into form and being. And we are here because we wanted to be part of that new earth. Okay. We wanted to ascend into that earth. We wanted to finally transcend everything we ever created in duality. But the mean is we can't cling on to duality in any form or way anymore. So you will be challenged. You will be challenged and say, let go now, you know, let go. You, you, you know, we literally have to dissolve into nothingness in order to be reborn into a new life, Okay. And when I say laughingness, it means you literally have to let go of everything that you ever thought defined you, everything that you ever thought you were, you know, and then let go. As long as you think you are somebody, you are not, you actually are not. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yes, yes. <laughs> you are energy. You, you are actually soul energy. And that is exactly what happened in Lemuria. And in Avalon, they knew how to become nothing in order to shape shift into something else. Okay. You cannot learn teleportation as long as you cling on to your whole body. <laughs> if you cling on to this physical form, you cannot teleport yourself. You got to do because, yeah, you can, if you, of course, you got to dissolve in order to get teleported. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> the ancient you. They knew it. And that is why, you know, the yogis even tell you they could bilocate. They could be in more places than one. That's it. And don't tell you that science doesn't know it. I mean, as librarian, I read books that people that fight. Go and read up about remote viewing. Go and read about the secret project that they had, you know, and where they actually, so a, a, a doctor was telling me that the other day about how he met these two Russians and South Africans. And they were part of, of a project that they did in Russia where they actually went and gathered all the psychics, you know, the ones that were psychic. And they were trained by doctors to completely rely on their heart center and their psychic center so that they could do remote viewing, so that they could read energy fields, so that they could read people's energy fields to see where their disease lies in their bodies. So don't, don't think that governments don't know this. You know, go and dig a bit deeper and you will see how much is withheld from humanity. 
I don't think there are not books written about it. I'm a librarian. I had those books in my hand and I knew that people were reading them. Okay. That was even years back. Okay. So it's not that the information is not available. It's because people are too lazy to go and actually do some research. You know, sometimes they know it's something intuitively and they know that whatever is given out is not right for them. But then they fall for outside opinions of people that are malinformed and then they succumb to that pressure and then become what the other people want them to become. This time, is about finally standing back in your own power where you will not be allowed anybody to influence you in any form and way, but you will seek the highest truth within you. Intuitive, you know, if you know the truth for sure for yourself, you will have a surety within you. You will just know. Then stand by that knowing and don't let anybody persuade you in any form or way. They will try to make it create fear. They will try to coerce you. They will try to push you. There lies your greatest test now for all souls to finally say, uh uh, I have learned my lessons in past lives. I've learned it in this life. I am not going to repeat the same old lessons ever again. This time I'm ascending it. I'm transcending it. And I'm standing in the fullness of the truth of who and what I am. And that's the way that we ascend because the more you do it, the more you will be guided, the more you will find the insights and vision comes to you, the more the information will come to you and you will start to apply that and you will start to co-create the new golden age with love. That's for all of us now, not just me, it's everyone. And it's beautiful unfolding there because what is teaching us, it's teaching us that the greatest truth, the greatest knowing, the greatest things are there within you. It's always been within you. It's never been outside you because you are totally linked to the divine that created you. That piece of jigsaw puzzle that you are has got the divine name written into your name. So you can never be separated from the very source that created you. Judith, you are such a dynamo of light. It is uh, such a joy to be able to connect with you and to hear you speak and share your wisdom and knowledge in such a delightful way. Um, and it's so empowering too. And it's, it's always coming back to this connection that we are all connected. We are all part of the same divine source and that there is truly nothing to be fearful of, that we are just taking these steps, aligning everything around us now to be heart-centered. And as you say, I'm finding that um, no realities can stay, sustain itself now if it isn't from this heart frequency, because um, that's not where we're going as a collective. And so we are all moving in that direction, those who choose it. Well, I was just saying, I was called in for a galactic meeting the other, you know, about a few, few days ago, nights ago. And uh, the day the message was in that by divine decree, we, it has been decreed that the new earth and the new golden age of peace will start. And it has started now fully. It started even on the 5th of July, 2020, when the new earth was born and when the old earth ceased to be. And the thing is, no matter what is seemingly playing out on the world, it's the old duality, it's death throes now, okay? It's, it's the death throes. Because when, when the divine has decreed something, there's no earthly power that can actually prevent that. But we are all standing through that thing that everybody's got free will and choice, okay? What is it that you're choosing now? 
Do you choose to now finally step back into the fullness of the truth of who you are? Or are you going to stay, you know, and dissipate with the old earth, you know, and the old people who run it, you know, because those old systems are standing for exactly the same challenge now, you know, they know it. It, 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 they know it. And somehow or other, I've always told, they chose to play out that roles. Okay. It, it goes beyond our understanding how somebody can take on that role. But what they're really doing is they're pushing all of us out of our comfort zones now. So they're doing a tremendous job of it, you know. So you could just say thank you. <laughs> say thank you, you know. The more you do it, the more the souls will be challenged to actually start to go and find the truth within themselves and live it and to ascend into the higher planes where, where you will just know and everything will just, you create things within that frequency. You create it instantly and with love for the greater good. So in other words, you, you everybody is benefiting from it and everybody slots in exactly where they are, you see. And that is how creation works. Because if everybody slots in exactly where they are, then it's one single whole. And you've got nothing to fight about and you've got nothing to defend because you're part of the whole. You never lose your, your beautiful soul self in that because your soul self is so bright in that shining light that it's like a circuit board, you know, all the lights going on. So all work as one single unit. <laughs> You are such a blessing, Judith. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your wonderful wisdom with us. It's so much appreciated. We love you very, very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me back. And you're a shining light in your own way. And thank you so much. And uh, yeah, it, it's a heart of love now. You know, it's, it's love is the only way and it's the only path. There is no greater and more meaningful path than that of love. <laughs> it's it's a be all and end all of all existence. It's it's the ultimate, and that's what we're being taught now. You know, it's it's love in the deepest and highest degree. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>